Yeah, in the documentary, the Behind the Curve, you, you mentioned something about flat earth being like a poop sandwich, something you touch when, when, when you've gone through everything else. Uh, what else did you believe or what, what else do you believe? Is, is this something that's unique and only only like a controversial theory you believe? Oh, no, no, no. I mean, I, I have an opinion on just about, you can ask, but I'll, I'll offer as well. Uh, I have an opinion on just about every conspiracy you could think of. An opinion. Some I like, some I don't. Uh, but, but yes, flat earth was the, is the worst of, of all the conspiracies out there. And you have to wonder why, I mean, it seems so simple, but why is it the most hated? And it's because it's the most reinforced, you know, we put the globe out there in a child's classroom, especially in the States when you're six years old and it stays there at least through high school. But when it came to conspiracies, I was a big fan of the, you know, all, all the big American ones. America has the best conspiracies. Let's face it. Uh, you know, everything going, going back to, I don't know, Pearl Harbor, one of, one of my favorite ones, uh, JFK, 9-11, the moon landing, those big four are uh, probably the, the most notorious that are out there. And then all the smaller ones that are underneath it. Uh, but, but between those four, you, you, you have to question the official, the official narrative. Absolutely. I mean, the, the, what I've been trying to put out to people lately is because people get mad at the general public for believing everything without questioning. It's like, look, that's, that's all they know. They believe there's a huge chunk of the American population, especially because we create so much media, that whatever is on the news is absolutely and objectively true. They would never, there's, they have no uh, hidden influences. They, they, there are no ulterior motives. And it's like, look, there are, they, that news organization is owned by a parent company, which is owned by another company. And they have vested interests in, in certain things. Not to mention, you know, the, the people at the top. And so, anyway, how, how's that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, and I, I, I agree with your your take on the, the America has the best conspiracies. I think the, you have to give that to you. I mean, you, you are really good at this. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. We're, we're, <laughs> well, well, which also leads into why why people believe Americans when it comes to certain things. Yeah, you know, I, like the moon landing, a great example. I've talked to tons of people outside this country and i said you know, why do you believe in the moon landing why do you believe the americans went to the moon it's like well because it was on television it's like yeah yeah because it was on the news that you know the news would never ever lie to you for any reason and i've put that to people is like, so the news never ever lies about anything ever 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 and they stop and they say well, okay maybe not everything well well here's here's the two sentences i put at people i say okay there's no such thing as fake news and I say, resolve these two sentences. Everything on CNN is absolutely true. And everything on Fox News is absolutely true. Well, depending on what team, you you know, red team or blue team, you can't, you can't agree with both those statements. So there is fake news. It just depends on what camp you're in. And then it just kind of slips from there. But for most people, the conspiracy world is their, their comfort zone you know, what they're willing to look at and what they're not willing to look at. And it's very, very different for every single person. You know, there's this imaginary line that's drawn and there's some things that people are willing to, you know, willing to talk about, but there's other things that they're not. And for a lot of people, it's the media has to sanction it. So like the media will never sanction a quote unquote, a conspiracy. It'll always be a scandal unless people die and then it'll be a tragedy. But conspiracies are always considered fringe. They're always considered way outside of the box and should never, ever look at them. We all know full well there's conspiracies in just about every aspect of our lives, especially here in business and politics and sports and entertainment. And yeah, even journalism and, uh, and science. There's all sorts of conspiracies. It doesn't take much. So, sorry, I ramble. Please cut me off at any time. No, 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 no you don't. I mean, that, that was a good, good point. I mean, I, I, I agree with you that, that I mean, it's, uh, it's not uh, black and white or like on or off. I mean, there are, there are shades. I mean, that, that, that's, a, that's a good, yeah. good point. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, again, the, the general public, they, they like, oh, there was that great line from Men in Black, which is um, people like to think they have a good bead on things, that they know what's going on. But 
truthfully, everybody's really afraid that they don't know what's going on and they don't want to look at it. They don't want to know how little control they have over their own lives. That look, there's people in power that kind of steer the, all of our civilization in certain directions. And they do that because they think, well, we know better than you. We, you know, we, we have your best interest at heart. It's for the greater good. And you'll hear that a lot. And I'm one of those weird conspiracy guys that actually believes in the greater good. You know, I, I, the, the only reason I, the, how I qualify conspiracy is I look at it from the other side of the fence. It's like, okay, if I was the, the guy wearing the black hat, would I do it like this? And would I change anything about, you know, and if I look at a conspiracy and I say, oh, yeah, it looks seems pretty solid, the logic involved, then that's I say it's probably a good conspiracy. So. OK. Uh, I, I mentioned in the email I sent you that I'm, I'm mainly interested in in these like general ideas around beliefs and truth and stuff like that. And I'll get into that later but just, okay. just as a, like a brief idea flat earth for dummies type of thing could you say why do you don't believe earth is round and what would the map or model of it look like and i mean okay just to get a general idea of where you come <clears throat> from and why yeah 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 and by the way we but everybody in the flat earth community we don't once you become a flat earther you never use the word round again you only use uh either ball sphere or globe or flat okay uh because a dinner plate is round a coin is round technically uh but yeah. but but, but I may just preface that up now why do i believe in it why why do i believe in a flat earth rather than the globe the easiest answer, and it's the most common answer you will get no matter who you talk to, is I couldn't prove the globe. Meaning everyone goes out, try to disprove flat earth by reinforcing the globe. They look at it and say, well, I know that I can prove the globe, obviously, right? You all think, everybody thinks that. And then when you look and you, and you turn to all the globe reinforcements for validation, it, it comes up empty. Meaning um, you'll lean on NASA and the space programs, obviously. It's almost, almost what everybody does, knee-jerk reaction, first thing. You, you lean on NASA and every photo taken from space and into space. And so what, what I say is, you know, can I prove to you right now that the world is absolutely flat? No, but I can create so much reasonable doubt in the globe that the only place you have left to turn is some sort of flat earth model. And that model is that you're living basically in a building, uh, a giant building with walls and a floor and a ceiling uh, that is so big and so complex that even our best and brightest didn't figure it out till almost 1960. And that would be the Soviet Union and the United States. And when they found it out, you know, what found out, they, they decided to keep it a secret. We, the human beings had nothing to do with the construction of this place. We all we did was figure it out and then just kept the secret for several decades. But the model itself, uh, think of a lake, a giant saltwater lake in the middle of a giant flat plain. And then on the borders of that lake would be ice and snow. And inside the lake, you have several islands, which would be continents. And, th and then it's covered by either a dome or some sort of box. I mean, personally, I think it's probably squared off at the edges because you know, if you were going to construct this thing, you would, you, you know, the engineering, engineering loves squared off 90 degree angles. They, they don't like curved surfaces that very, very much. So that's what we're talking about. And it's not very high. The ceiling doesn't have to be very high. It'd, it'd kind of look like a shallow sports stadium a shallow covered sports stadium where you would, it, you know, some people, they use the snow globe and because it's easy to remember. And we, remember, we know the icon since we're children, but, but that arc, you don't have to have anything with a, with a ceiling with that high of an arc to it. Uh, something very, very shallow because remember commercial airlines cap out at about 10 miles high, uh, spy planes, if you believe them cap out at about 20 miles high. So you know, you're talking about a structure that's tens of thousands of miles wide, but maybe not even a thousand miles high or, you know, maybe 3000 at the most, but it's definitely not, you know, a very, very high arc structure. 
And that's what and it's a pressurized system. And what's everything that you see in the sky as far as the sun and the moon and the stars, they're just lights on the ceiling. No different than a planetarium. And I mean no different, uh, with the exception of the resolution. You know, planetariums are usually projections, you know, simple projections have been around since the 70s. But we're talking now, you know, about what, 10,000 K monitors would, would, is what would probably be up there or something even more advanced, something that, you know, we haven't even come up with. And that's it. What's outside of here is doesn't have to be space. Why would there be space? You're, you're basically living in a construct. And could it be, by the way, could it be digital? Could it be virtual? Yeah, absolutely. It could be. Why, why not? I, you know, the, that, that would even be easier. But if you were talking about the physical side of things, yeah, you're talking about a building that you're inside. There's all, all that stuff that they tell you about light years and uh, everything that goes on with quantum mechanics and dark matter and everything that's out there. Nah, no, nah, it's not, doesn't exist. Okay. So, uh, what do you do um, in order to to um, persuade people to 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 believe your version? And uh, are are you happy with the progress you're making? I mean, getting you you more people involved, or I mean, how do you uh, feel about that? Well, what I did again, it wasn't deliberate. I fell into this by accident, and I, I've said this several times, which is that when I made what I was trying to, I was looking for answers. And I consider my, you know, I, I used to teach proprietary software uh, for companies for decades. And then, so I consider myself a fairly clever problem solver. But I couldn't, I wasn't completely convinced that my answer was the answer or, or, one, of, or one of the answers. And so when I put my stuff out there, when I made the videos, the Flat Earth Clues, and put them out on the internet, I made them very, very easy to understand. I used my software training and kind of boiled it down. The whole concept of the, of the flat earth model, I boiled it down to very, very easy, easy to digest segments, you know, 10 minutes long. Yeah, usually the, the clues were barely even 10 minutes long, each one of them. And I used almost no math. In fact, I can't even remember any math I used in the original clues. I, I basically, I, I came up with stuff that was, that didn't let the audience stumble. You know, it, it was, it was flowing and it was yet yeah, easy to understand. And they didn't get, I, I didn't, didn't put in things that they they get hung up on where all of a sudden you would lose it. I'm a big, I've been a big believer in plot writing and good writing. So I'm a, I'm a stickler when it comes to movies and entertainments. And that is if the plot, if there's too many plot holes, the audience loses interest. And so when I was writing this, I was like, well, I've got to make, make to where they will watch it all the way through. And most people did. They watched the, the, all the clues all the way through. So as far as progress, you know, I, I never thought that it would gain the traction that it did. I really was putting it out there for the academics to look and say, oh, it's a simple flat earther. I'm going to shoot him down. And I was hoping the academics would come at me uh, in force and hit me with everything they got. And it was the opposite. The public came at me and the media came at me and subject matter ex experts came at me and they wanted to know more. And that's and then people started coming up with their own stuff. I, I never at any time during my clues said that people should go to the beach with high uh, HD cameras and start shooting long distance photography. But they did. Yeah, they don't, everyone started coming up with, you know, I, I ended a lot of the clues with do your own research and ask questions. You know, don't, don't take my word for it, figure it out yourself. And people just start coming up with their own things, which is great. Fantastic. And every once in a while, people, people, I'd get updates about what people are doing. It's like, wow, it really, really was expanding. It wasn't my intention. Never, you know, I never sat down with a blueprint and a game plan. It's like, oh yeah, here's how I'm going to spread flat earth. That's silly. Nobody wants to spread flat earth. It's a, it's a ridiculous theory, but in this case, maybe it wasn't so ridiculous. I, I, it was, it was an idea that was put out there. It's just sort of, it's like, all right, am I, am I wrong in my thinking? And apparently I wasn't. So. Okay. Um, do you feel that the playing field is even 
that you, you're able to to say what you want. I mean, if, if the whole idea is that this, uh, what you're telling is uh, is something that's hidden from people. So, I mean, there's a lot of talk about censorship and deplatforming on social media and stuff. Do you feel that you are able to do what you want to do, or do you feel that there's a pressure of yeah. some, someone trying to silence you? Yeah, well, yeah, there in the flat Earth community. Going back to 2015, we were heavily, it was the opposite at first. We were heavily promoted by YouTube. I mean, heavily promoted because people forget that YouTube is the largest television network in the world. There's thousands and thousands, and thousands of hours of content uploaded. Well, there's 80 hours of content uploaded apparently every minute. That's a lot. That's a huge amount of content. I mean, most of it's you know not that watchable, but it really varies. So they were promoting us as a binge topic for three years straight. I mean, we were being recommended for you constantly on the right-hand side. And then after three years, in the summer of 2018, the, uh, the, the government started getting involved because they were looking at fake news, the whole Trump thing, you know, the fake news. And we became one of only three topics that was mentioned in a government hearing where it was uh, the three topics were uh, false medicines, you know, m cure all medicines, um, false flags, which is you're not supposed to question anything, any any tragic event that involves deaths like a shooting and a uh, flat earth. Now, they now YouTube came out and, and really we that's where we thrived was YouTube because that was the, the, the big one. It still is, is the biggest one out there. And. They, the government said, okay, we're going to ban fake medicines and false flags, false flag claims. But with you, with Flat Earth, we're going to recommend it less. And that's exactly what they did. So towards the end of 2018, they started, rec they weren't demonetizing us, but they were recommending us much less. And because of that, our monetization rates went down by at least 60% right off the bat. And then they started doing things like shadow banning us. Uh, you know, you could look my stuff up or try to look it up on YouTube and it's tougher and tougher to do. Uh, and then the natural process, which was as the bigger verified channels, including news channels, mainstream news channels start covering flat earth, just about everybody's covered it. They, uh, those came up, those come up in the search engines first. And so finding something, you know, finding a video from one of the people in our community or from the documentary, that takes a while if you're, if you're just using a standard filter. But, I mean, we're out there, but I like I tell people now you, in order to mo find my videos, you literally have to type in flat earth mark to to get it to pull up, because if you don't, you, you know, there's just so many people. I mean, just about every, everybody you can think of has done a flat earth video. Uh, so we were kind of drowned, you know, in the in the, the the waters got muddied so much. But yeah, we absolutely we were. And I don't want to call it straight up censorship because it's a, it's a private company. You know, YouTube can do whatever they want. It's a private company. And they were promoting us. They were helping us for three years. So I can't get, get too angry at them. I was like, well, you know, they do what they want to do. And there was some government pressure. And we had already saturated the market. What I thought was interesting, though, was that they killed the scoreboard, if you don't know what that is. Um, so in every search engine that's ever been made, there's something called search results, right? Search results equals a number that's it's been there forever. And YouTube had that. And of course, why wouldn't they? I mean, they're owned by Google. It's the biggest search engine there is. And we were tracking that number from the very beginning. So in 2015, our search results equaled, 2015, our, our search results equaled about 50,000 roughly. And that's references and everything tied to the videos. It's not raw videos. But by the summer of 2018, we were almost at 21 million, which is monstrous, huge, huge jump. And to compare, and I, and I started doing score, score sheets, comparing this to, against other topics. We were blowing away Neil deGrasse Tyson and NASA. And we were blowing, hell, Lady Gaga was only at 12 million. I mean, we, were, we were crushing everybody. There was only like three or four topics ahead of us. Um, we had, in fact, we had just pr uh, passed President Trump, which I think they didn't appreciate too much. And the only people that ahead of, were ahead of us were uh, Katy Perry, Taylor Swift, I think Justin Bieber, maybe, you know, really big pop stars. 
And then all of a sudden, one day, somebody called me a couple of weeks after we passed Trump. And they said, yeah, by the way, the scoreboard's down. I go, you mean it's stunted? The numbers are wrong? They go, no, the, it's gone. The line isn't there anymore. They removed search results for all topics, period, forever. It's no one talks about it. And people say, oh, you're delusional to think that Flat Earth had something to do. It's like, why, why wouldn't? We were the only ones that were paying attention to that number. And it's gone. You can type, type in YouTube all day long. There is, you will never see search results equals a number again. It's been gone now for three years. So, anyway. Okay. I, I had no idea. I, I haven't been paying, paying attention, so I, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It, it was one of those little, and, and it was, they watched us. I mean, they, they had dedicated people who were watching us on a regular basis. I don't know why. Uh, but that was one of those things. And I, I still have the videos up on my channel where, you know, I was listing all these other topics like the Beatles. You, you could just pick a topic and we were just racing right past them as far as uh, the the number of the, the search results in YouTube were kind of like the, the viewers choice awards type deal where it was what the audience was doing. It was how many times other videos were referencing your topic. Which is why, like, for a perfect example, like a PewDiePie, right? One of the biggest channels in the world, right? 100, 100 million subs, right? What a lie, right? But if you typed in his name into YouTube, his search results only came up as 5 million. Well, how's that even possible? It's because no one was replicating his, his videos. Nobody was talking about him. He was, it was just a self-promotion thing. Whereas Katie, you know, Taylor Swift was coming in at 30 million. And, you know, she, she was a grand, you know, so she's a Grammy winner. So anyway, sorry, go ahead. What, what else? What else yeah. You yeah. Yeah. Uh, in general, how, how easy is it to be a flat earther today? I mean, are you, are you being called conspiracy theorists or, I mean, does it affect your relationships? I mean, in, in the documentary, there was, um, you mentioned something about there being dating apps for, 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 oh yeah, for yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, that's, that's the only, only, only way to go because other people are, are, are too skeptical. I mean, how, how does that like this social, uh, thing? Well, it, work well, for you? the, the social thing is very interesting because it is such a huge paradigm change. The only thing you could really compare it to is religion, meaning, uh, w if you were dating someone, if you were um, uh, Christian and the other person was Islamic and or, or they changed to, to one of the other religions, there's going to be a problem. You're, you're, you're going to have issues. And so it, and that is the case with Flat Earth. It is such a huge paradigm change because you're talking about the whole world that unless your significant other is on board with it, it's, it's a problem that's never, ever going to go away. And eventually it's going to drive a wedge between you. So uh, it, uh, I have never, and for, well, for me, like once I got into this, I only dated, I, I knew this expectation going in, in advance. So I only dated people that were really into flat earth or willing to look at it. And I've heard this from many, many other flat earthers. You, if you're flat, if you're into flat earth, you can't date someone who's not. Now, if you're married already, I, you know, I've, I've seen divorce. I've seen people that the relationships will just crack up. What something's got to give eventually the other side has to either capitulate or, or walk away from it. And sometimes they do because it is a, is a really, really big deal. It's a tough thing for some people to get around. It's the biggest of all conspiracies physically, because you're not talking with every other conspiracy. It's something you can walk away from. And you know, if you don't want to look at JFK, you don't have to look at it. It's not going to affect your life. You don't want to look at 9-11. You don't want to Pearl Harbor. You want to look at any of that stuff. You, you don't have to. Secrets can be hidden in the desert and bury, you know, people can bury things in their minds forever. But this one you can't, because we, which is why we get so many Matrix references. Because once you, once you learn about the Matrix, you can't unlearn it. You can't unsee it. And that's the documentary. It did an okay job portraying this, but the reason why we have a 99% retention rate, for example, and meaning if you're in a flat earth, you never go back because you were the one that tore it down in the first place. I didn't convince you. I didn't persuade you. I just said, Oh yeah, by the way, do your own research. And you do, if you do, you're the one that, that, that chips away and, and tears down the globe. Well, if you were the one that tore down the globe, how are you going to put it back together? You can't. There's, there's nothing, there's nothing to go back to. If there was some magic bullet 
that was out there that could that could kill flat earth that would have done it years ago but it's been six years and we do you know we just keep gathering the more and more and more people so uh but yeah it's it is difficult because fa you know it's it's such a huge paradigm change that yeah family and friends uh i have a tough tough time i warn people over the holidays i say do not go to a family holiday gathering and sit down and just l unload this on people <laughs> because it's never gonna go well and i rem the the one of the the most unsatisfying parts about flat earth or it's a weird it's a weird tick of flat earth is that people forget how long it takes them to get to that point for most people it's uh, a couple weeks to a month it took me a lot longer because i didn't have a lot of material to work with but once you get there so let's say it takes you three weeks and all of a sudden three weeks it's like wow you know what flat earth is pretty good all of a sudden you think that you could convince somebody in an hour or two that is because you all of a sudden had this this revelation and that revelation only took an hour or two it's like oh yeah i could totally convince somebody and you sit down and and say oh yeah and you you don't understand why they're not getting it and it's because well it takes time it's a process you'll never be there when they flip you you, you will never be there when all of a sudden they turn to flat earth it'll be on the they'll be on their own at three in the morning just working on the computer and it's like oh no and you know they because it's a it's a question of giving in with with our stuff you know you you brace against it you brace against it and then sooner or later uh, the the scales tip the other direction like me and it's like okay i get it now okay so is there i mean there's a question that i i think was was in the documentary as well but i mean is there for you any, any piece of evidence or proof that could could make you believe that you are wrong Oh yeah. The, yeah, 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 yeah. There's, there's two. Uh, what would it be? Oh uh, well, there's, there's two of them uh, that you could do. The first one, because people have asked me that for a while now. It's like yeah. mo most people. It's like, well, if we sent you into space, would that convince you? It's like, yeah, sure, but you're never going to send me to space, and no one has offered because it's. I would have to sign a waiver saying that. Oh yeah, by the way, you're going to say exactly what we tell you to, and I'd be like, uh, no. Uh, so you're never going to send me to space. However. Uh, two things you would do. First uh, is take any sort of camera, put it on a capsule of something that's going to leave orbit, something that's going to transmit, right? And point it down at the ground, point it at the, the launch pad. And as the rocket takes off, the, uh, the landscape should eventually form into a globe as it's leaving Earth orbit. And it's never happened in the history of space travel. That footage does not exist. You get, oh yeah, you get some footage every once in a while showing the globe already there. The the most recent one would be the SpaceX, the the Roadster in space, which was this thing supposedly going to go, went to Mars, supposedly. This thing takes off and you're watching the booster rockets and they're following the booster rockets back down to the ground for whatever reason. And then they cut to car and there it is, the profile of the car already orbiting the earth. It's like, all right, where's the Falcon Heavy rocket, rocket that dropped it off? Uh, where, where's any of the footage leading up to that point? We've got three wonderful cameras on the car. Where, in fact, why is that car even intact? But anyway, the point is that would be the first one. It, it, some sort of camera pointing down. But if you want something simple, something cheap, that would go a long way to proving this, uh, it would be the vacuum chamber spacesuit test, which is somebody, and I put this challenge out there for, oh, wow, four years now, going on four years which is find me a spacesuit, loan me a spacesuit from any era going, from, you know, because no, no, no spacesuits ever failed in the history of spacesuits, which is a whole nother thing uh, from the 60s all the way till today. Self-contained and that G-Force fighter plane suit crap, uh, you know, self-contained backpack spacesuit. Put me in a vacuum chamber, pull the switch, tell me what happens. Tell me how I survive. Of course, it'd be nice if there was somebody else in there with me you know, with another spacesuit. And the, it's like, okay, what's the point? My point is, is that the spacesuit completely violates uh, the, one of the laws of physics, which is uh, pressure cannot exist next to non-pressure without some sort of barrier. And by that, that barrier has to be rigid. And the spacesuit is not. The spacesuit is, a, is basically a, a, a thick balloon. It's like a basketball or a football. So why doesn't the spacesuit turn into a basketball? Every every soft container you put in a vacuum chamber expands until it's rigid and then it bursts. 
the spacesuit does not. In fact, you can bend your arms and legs and knees and fingers like like there was nothing happening. And it's never it's never happened. And it's like why tell tell me why there isn't thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of people of astronauts in spacesuits uh, you know, doing the testing in a vacuum chamber. It's the exact opposite. The only footage we see is of them underwater. Why, why are they test? Why are they doing tests? Well, cause you're floating underwater. Oh, okay. Okay. First that's reverse pressure. That's pressure coming in. That's not pressure going out. The spacesuit wouldn't be stress tested at all doing this. The second is why would you be floating? Especially if you're on the moon. That's a whole nother thing, which is people say, oh, well, you know, you, we've seen the footage, right? They're floating around the moon, bouncing around. And it's like, why, why are they floating? Well, because it's one sixth Earth gravity. I go, and so what? I go, I go, fine. A 180 pound man weighs 30 pounds. He's not going to float. 30 pounds is still 30 pounds. It just means 30 pounds of gravity. 30 pounds falls, falls to the floor just as fast. It doesn't float. It's like, well, so what, what are we seeing? It's like, well, because all you did is slow down the camera footage by 50%. That's all you did. And it's like, get this floating feeling. If anything, and they're move, everybody's moving in slow motion. It would be the exact opposite. Everyone would be moving very fast because your muscles would be way overpowering your weight. Your arms would be moving really fast. You'd be able to jump extremely fast. You'd be able to lift everything. You should be able to one arm that freaking rover car that they put up there, which didn't make any sense. So anyway, sorry, I ramble, but the, the short, the short, the short version, I've done this a few times. The short version of that is the spacesuit test that if you put me in a vacuum chamber and again, I can, I can even tell you if it's a vacuum chamber with $4 worth of uh, things, a balloon, a little thing of tap water and a bell, because that, that's how you know, if you're actually in a vacuum chamber, the balloon, because the balloon would burst, uh, tap water boils in a vacuum, in a perfect vacuum. And a bell would make no sound. So it's not like you could put me in a vacuum chamber and just say, well, you're in a vacuum now. Oh, no, <laughs> I could test that in two seconds. And no one's ever called me. There are universities with vacuum chambers. I know there's spacesuits out there. They're not being used. No one will touch it with a 10-foot pole. So, yeah, I think I've, I've got a, uh, some, some good stuff going on with this. So what if, what if not, I would put out the press release tomorrow and say that sorry we lied all this time would you, would you believe them um was it you mean if nasa fessed up <laughs> to well I've, ta yeah. I've i've talked about this in in various things which is i think that one day they may have to but they're gonna get an out meaning there may be an older civilization out there there you know i'm not going to necessarily say aliens i just say older versions of us that are out there, which, you know, all, all you need is, is some older civilization to say, oh, yeah, by the way, we told NASA to lie. We instructed them not to give you, you know, too much information. And then NASA would be off the hook. So NASA's not just going to come out one day. Why? why, why? No, nobody's ever admitted to, to lying. Of every, that, they, that's, that's, um, that's lawyer 101, which is lawyers will tell you. It's like, doesn't matter if you're guilty. You never, ever, ever admit guilt until they have you. Uh, the, the Lance Armstrong thing, a great example, right? Which was uh, every year, you know, he was winning the tournament. Everybody knew he was cheating, you know, he, that he was using uh, performance drugs and, and uh, you know, altered blood. And every year he's like, nope, nope, everything's fine. Nope, totally legit. And he did this year after year. And then finally, when somebody backed him into a corner, I think it was one of his drug dealers, you know, they were, he was getting blackmailed. <laughs> he comes out and says, oh, yeah, by the way, I've been lying for the last seven years. So that is very, very, very rare. So, no, NASA is not going to get backed into a corner like that. Uh, no government organization gets gets backed into a corner. They never, ever happens. If they if they do, they find a way out of it. Uh, so, no, N NASA's never going to do it. But but if they did, would I believe it? Sure. Sure, I believe it. But they're not going to. And nor do I think they would just come out and say it, nor would the UN come out and say, oh, yeah, by the way, the world isn't what you think it is, uh, because they're worried about the follow up question might be is like, well, what would be the harm? Why not tell the public? And it's like, well, because if you do, you're you're potentially risking the infrastructure of civilization, meaning if we didn't even know because we didn't have the technology to know until almost 1960. 
Well, by then, we'd already had 4,000 years and change at least of history. We've already built our civilization. And you want to risk that? It, again, it's not what they have stand to gain necessarily, but they stand to lose a huge amount. Uh, the the academic, you know, every every university would have to rewrite entire libraries. Uh, economically, you would have to suspend world markets for months. And religious, huh, <laughs> the five major religious houses of the world, uh, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, uh, Islam, and Christianity, you, you're you're basically giving them all huge amounts of leverage against science simultaneously. The, the the combination of those three things that's a nightmare. So no, you can't you can't tell the public until you have a good way of spinning it to the public, or you just figure out a way to crash the whole thing, and then hope that that nobody noticed what you did. Either way. Okay. So so what one thing you, you mentioned already. Um moon landing and and moon, moon travel uh what's your take on that is it the stanley kubrick production or i mean why, why would they even even try and pull something like that off why why just not right 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 how, how do you see that the, the whole, whole whole situation there yeah that was a big thing for me because the moon landing was uh, something, you know, in the United States, we've been questioning the moon landing and way before the internet. We've been questioning it for years. Uh, but you, but because there was no internet, you didn't have a lot of people talking about it. Most of the time you'd have to go to like a UFO convention or something like that. And, and cause there was a lot of very smart people, mostly nerd, you know, nerdy types that would look at the photographs mostly and movies and say, yeah, there's something wrong here. The photographs aren't aren't right, and the movies don't. Are, there's there's production issues now. Of course, we we have entire websites dedicated, like moviemistakes.com, you know, with because if you have a massive production, the bigger the production is, the more mistakes are going to be made because movies are shot out of sequence for cost saving things. Well, that should never happen in real life, but it was. We were running into that stuff, so why? But and and I got it. You know, some people it's like, well, you know, they're faking it to uh, to put forward that American dominance. You know, go go red, white, and blue. Go team. We're the greatest. I'm going. Yeah, that's a pretty good answer, but it's not a great answer. And then when I got into flat Earth, then it kind of clicked, which is like, okay, I get it. It's not that you wanted to fake the moon mission or, or the entire space program. You had to fake it. Because if you didn't fake it, eventually you run the risk of private companies getting involved with the space programs and then you can't control it. Basically, you had to militarize space. And so what they did was very clever. They took all the big contractors that made parts, because NASA doesn't actually make their own parts. They get it from other companies like Boeing or General Dynamics or Lockheed Martin, those guys, M military people. And then they put everything together and they, they launch it. It's, it's all, you know, military technology. NASA is completely Department of Defense, by the way. And you go up there and you fake, you fake the moon missions. You go rapid fire, you know, f what, six missions in a, just a span of a few years, which is un still un unheard of. And then in 1972, you shut the whole thing down. You say, yep, that's it. Every, no one even cares about the moon anymore. We're, not, we're done with this. You know, good night, everybody. Roll credits. And that's it. That's the end of the story. Whoa, okay, what happened to the space race that you'd been talking about for 10 years? You know, the big space race between the Soviet Union and the United States? Well, that's how, how, how did that end exactly? Well, okay, we, we got, the Americans went to the moon and then Russia just quit just stopped it's like what you mean the russians never bothered it's like that's not how it would have gone the russians would have put five people we would have put 10 people they put a small base we put a bigger base and then all the magazines would have said has the cold war reached the moon that's how it would have gone but it was the exact opposite which was the americans got there and russia says well well they got there or do 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 we'll quit and walk off the track <laughs> It's it's stunning, but the but when you look at it from the flatter side, they, it had to be done that way, um, because you couldn't have. Imagine this. Yeah, I don't know how much you are on media, which is, you can't have two studios working on the same project simultaneously and expect the exact same results. Meaning, if we have a production house that's working on the fake moon stuff here in the states, and then there's another production house outside of Moscow that's working on the same stuff. 
And we're talking completely different countries. It's not like there's studios. They're both studios in Los Angeles where they can compare notes. Well, you're going to have a problem because the things have to match up. So let's say, for example, we, you know, we, we made sure there was no stars in any of our footage any, on the moon, right? Well, what if Russia all of a sudden put, put a fake star field in there? That would just blow the whole thing out of the wire. It's like, well, why, are there, why are there stars in the Russian version? Or why does their ash look so much more brown? Or why do the rocks look completely different? Or all, you know, people would be comparing notes so much that the, the whole thing would fall apart. So what you do is you just both sides talk to each other. It's like, okay, there can only be one production facility and, and the Americans can throw way more money at it. So that's what they did. And the Russians just quietly faded off into nothingness and no other country, by the way, that's also a reason why no other, no, no country went back to the moon since 1972. There's six supposedly with launch capabilities, um, India, Europe, Japan, China, uh, and the Soviet Union, the United States. Nobody went back. Uh, I talked to uh, uh, some science kids in uh, the UK a couple years ago. And I threw it at them, and I've heard this time and time again. I go, I go, why hasn't anyone gone back to the moon? It's like, we will, we will. It's like, really? When? And they go, soon. We'll go soon. I go, yeah. <laughs> I've heard that from every American president since Reagan. <laughs> it hasn't happened. Yeah, they've kicked this can down the road. The 70s is a long time ago. And nobody's even talking about it. No, every once in a while you hear the story. It's like, oh, we're going to do a thing on the moon. Oh, we're going to do a thing. Nobody does anything. It's, it's, it's staggering. What, uh, and, and the general public doesn't know it. You could uh, tell the general public. In fact, I think there was a study done like a year ago that you could say, oh, yeah, we've got like a small base on the moon. And like a third of the people that walk around the streets said, oh, yeah, that sounds about right. No, there's nothing there. Sorry, I rambled. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you, you, you touched on, on, on something there when you, you mentioned the um, Soviet Union as well. Yeah. Uh, wh wh why, who do you think is behind this operation of, of hiding this through them? I mean, it has to be a massive operation. And I mean, as you mentioned, not limited to United States. It has to be a global one. I mean, I guess that's one, one thing that gets thrown at you as, as well. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How would you get everyone on the same page? Well, you don't need to get that many people involved first. Uh, there was a movie done back in the late 70s here in the States called Capricorn One, which I love so much uh, because it was, a, it, was, it was actually inspired by the production values that were done on the moon. Uh, there was a CBS affiliate that... Uh, watched the the moon footage and he, it was just horrible in his opinion and it's not that he thought it was fake he goes look I could make a better moon moon footage than this he goes and then he goes you know you know what I can make a better Mars mission than this and that's what he did he got the funds together and he, and he made this fake Mars Mars mission movie well in that movie we realized that nobody at NASA knew what was going on except for just a small handful of people. You can have people building fuel systems and life support systems and capsules and everyone from the janitors to the HR department. Nobody knows anything except for the telemetry guys. Those are the only guys that need to know. Uh, and we'll get to the other countries in a second. So when a rocket goes up, right, and a rocket goes up and it goes out of visual distance where you can't see it anymore, it's up to the telemetry guys to tell you where the rocket is. Well, they can tell you anything they want. You know, they just say, oh, look at these numbers on the screen. This is where the rocket is. They can make up where, whatever they want. They can, in any coordinate they want, they can, they can tell you and you have to believe them. And that's what the, the Capricorn one was saying. It's like every, once, once the rocket is out of your line of sight, the public will believe anything you tell them. And... And they, and they did, and they faked the entire Mars mission. And supposedly it blew up in their faces at the end, but I don't think it did. Um, when it comes to the other countries, think about it. There's only six groups with launch capability. Well, you make sure that the people at the tippy top know what's going on, sure. But very, very few people, as far as the why, you know, why they're faking it, very, very few people have to know. Uh, in the military, it's called compartmentalization which is need to know basis, no different than a sniper. For example, you know, you send, you, you've seen the movies and tell you, you send a sniper out. It's like, oh yeah, I got to kill this dignitary. He's going to walk out of this hotel. You got to shoot him between here and here. And that's it. Here's what he looks like. Here's you know, the photo. That's all the sniper knows. 
Right? He doesn't know the political backstory. He doesn't know the intrigue. He doesn't know the why or, or any of the, the little nuances that go along with it. He's not paid to know why. That's outside of his pay grade. With most of this, you don't tell them why. Uh, I think that every astronaut after Apollo wasn't even told why they were why they were faking anything. I think the Apollo astronauts were actually told why, which is why they, they turned into recluses and didn't give interviews and became alcoholics and the, you know just stayed away from the public as much as possible. I think it was the guilt more than anything. They were getting accol huge accolades for something they didn't do. Whereas now the astronauts are just military people. Like a uh, perfect example would be um, a guy I got to talk to in England, uh, one of our own, Terry Verts. And they asked me, one of the journalists asked me, it's like, oh, are you, are you calling him a liar? You know, this astronaut a liar, one of your, pay, one of your countrymen. And I go, I go, no, I'm saying he's a soldier. I go, every astronaut that goes up there are high ranking Air Force people, at least in the United States. We're talking colonels or higher, full bird colonels. You don't get to be a colonel in the military without knowing how to keep a secret. And they have different rules to follow. You know, if I lie, oh yeah, I may go to court, pay a fine, and, you know, make people feel bad, but... It, when you lie in the military, you know, if you go against the military code, it's called treason. And that's a whole nother set of rules where they will lock you in a room and throw, 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 the, ugh, throw away the room. It's not fun. So they, uh, it's, so anyway, what, what I'm getting at is you don't have to, it seems like you'd have to have a ton of people that would know about this, but you don't. Most of the people, you just let them do what they're doing. I like Neil deGrasse Tyson. People say, oh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. No, it's like, why would you ever tell him? Uh, he's a guy that is good on stage. He's got a lot of charisma. He does, he does his routine. He doesn't debate people. It's, you know, he comes on stage and says, space is amazing. Here's why. Why would you ever tell him the truth? You don't, that would just weigh on his shoulders. Same with a lot of people. Like, even the president of the United States, you don't have to tell him. He's, he's octaves below the power structure he's just a he's just a f uh, face guy he might as well be his own press secretary so no very very few people have to know about anything they know something but as you know people are, are prone to denial until you actually debrief them you really haven't told them you know people suspect a lot of stuff but until somebody official comes out you, you don't and unless you get that validation it doesn't really drive it home so it works I and mean, people suspect all sorts of fun things, but until, you know, you've heard it before. It's like, unless you have proof, I'm not going to listen to you because uh, they, they don't want to, they don't want to face it. And so there you go. Okay. Um, one, one very interesting uh, thing you said on, on one of your videos was that you said that science found evidence of God in, I think, 56 and decided to keep it a secret it's a very powerful and interesting statement could you explain what you mean by that um did i say it exactly well i used i used the uh, the video was actually called they are hiding god which yeah. which was well yeah so if all right so if this world is built and you find evidence that it was built then it was built by someone. So yeah, in 19, 1956, Operation Deep Freeze. 1955, 1956, the, the Americans were down there. I think the Soviet Union was probably helping. Uh, the United States Navy was, in my opinion, looking pretty much nonstop since 1928 for the outer marker of, of the edge of this world. It's not, it's not the coastline of Antarctica. It is way, way, way inland. And, you know, they're flying, they're flying, they're using refueling stations, they got their best people on it, and they're flying, they're flying. Well, if you do find the edge of the world, you know, the wall, as it were, the, the barrier, the edge of the snow globe, how's that? If you find this, do you tell people? Well, no, for various reasons, but there's a secondary thing there, and that is, well, once you find it, you have found some sort of proof of a higher power. And really you can only go down one of two roads, which is, okay, it's either an ancient civilization that's much older and more powerful than ourselves, or some sort of deity. And then you're kind of just splitting hairs because one man's ancient civilization is another man's deity. 
And yeah, so at that point, you are hiding God in a sense. And why wouldn't you? Because you have built the, the institution of science for the last five centuries, which I love. We're talking on it right now. Science has its wonderful moments, but science became scientism at some point where they realized the public will believe anything we say. As long as we're wearing a lab coat and carrying a clipboard and put our stamp on it, they will buy it. It's like, well, they're nerds. They're more, they're, they're more intelligent than us. We should, we should buy it. Um, there's a great line, and I, I put it in the description box of every video I'd make, called uh, or by George Orwell, you know, who wrote 1984, and he says he he was he's not a flat earther, but he was talking about how people just believe science. He he said that he goes, you walk up to anybody on the street, and this is 1946, mind you. He goes, you ask them how you know the world's a globe. And they say, what are you talking about? We just know. And then if you press them on it, they start getting angry. Because it's not that they know, they don't know, they were told. And there's a big difference between knowing something and being told something. And this is in 1946, NASA wasn't even founded until 1958. So how did the whole world know it was a globe in 1946? It's not that anyone knew anything about physics or geometry or engineering. I mean, there's some people say, well, ge you know, using geometry, we proved it. It's like, no, you didn't prove anything. It's, it was a theory. You, you, until you have a rocket to go up high enough and look back down on the world, what do you really know? Science has made mistakes in that arena tons of times. And so, yeah, did they hide God in, in my opinion? Yeah, they, they did. At least some semblance of God, since what 80% of the population of the world believes in some sort of deity, whatever name you want to call it. Uh, yeah, they, they were hiding that. Why wouldn't you? If you're the government acknowledging that automatically takes down your you become a second tier power meaning you're the government you're the, the highest power there is you're the highest authority in the land well what happens if all of a sudden you say yeah so we're living in a building uh we don't know who built it but they're really really big and powerful well all of a sudden you just made yourself smaller and that's never a good thing Never, ever a good thing. It's the same reason why the Air Force will never f officially, I don't care what they say, they'll never officially say that uh, there are UFOs out there that, that can run circles around our best fighter planes because you can't rule the sky if you don't rule the sky. It doesn't give people a whole lot of confidence if you say, oh yeah, my, our state-of-the-art fighters are nothing compared to these, these ships that are using a unified field engine. So, there you go. But who, who do you think are all these they who, who hide? I mean, you mentioned earlier that you, you probably don't need to tell the president of the United States. Oh, who's, I mean, yeah, the, the groups who's... Well, I mean, it, it has to go, go, go pretty high. I mean, I, and, and I mean, it's, uh, it's decades uh, old, so it's, it, it's not sort of the same set of people. I mean, is there a structure? Is there a hierarchy? I mean, would you, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Could, 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 you, could you say who, who, who they are? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, that's just it. <laughs> the first rule of power has never, ever changed in thousands of years, which is... Uh, stay hidden. True power stays hidden. Straight up. Everything else is a shell game. So if you ask the, the average conspiracy person, for example, it's like, who is the, the, who is the they, right? Who, who are the top 10 groups? Because we know there's all sorts of groups out there and they're real groups, right? They, you know, start out with, well, I don't know, uh, the Masons, the Bilderbergs, the Rothschilds, the Trilateral Commission, the Council of Foreign Relations, the Vatican, Oh my God, it just goes to the Illuminati, of course, and, and, and these groups overlap with each other and you don't know. The, the problem is, is that some of these groups are very, very new by comparison. I, it kills me when some people say, oh, it's the Rothschilds. I go, well, the Rothschilds, if you believe the legend, didn't even really establish their power until the, the battle, battle of Waterloo. That was the 1800s. Uh, and then people point, of course, you know, to the richest, uh, the most public. So when people say, oh, the richest man in the world is this, it's Jeff Bezos, it's, it's Bill Gates, it's all, that. it's like, no, 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 that's new money. Anyone that knows anything about society is like, there's new money and then there's old money. New money, you can have all the new money you want, but unless you have the established connections going back a long, long time, what do you really have? I mean, technically, if you want to go the, the technically the, the Vatican would have probably the oldest money because they are the remnants of the all-powerful Roman Empire. 
But but again, who runs it at the top? I mean, who is in the Illuminati? Nobody knows for sure. Why would you? I mean, that's the point. The the rule why you stay hidden is you can't be the puppet and the puppet master at the same time. The puppets are on stage, being controlled by strings and doing stuff. They are in the light. But the puppet masters have to be off stage. It is the curse of being the puppet master is that you can't be famous and the puppet master at the same time because the general public, if they find out who you are and they find out what you're doing, they will come. They can come at you. Uh, the, the other version of that is never put yourself in a position that you can be overthrown. Kings can be overthrown. Presidents can be overthrown. There's coup d'etats all the time. But if they don't know who you are, they can't come after you. Which is great, which is why the, the, the X-Files, wonderful uh, depiction of those groups, which was, the, you know, a bunch of older men, you know, from Europe, usually, uh, in a room, and you didn't know who any of them were. Oh, you can generally, you know, they, none of them were familiar. None of them had titles. They were just men of power. Older, you know, old, old power. That's, that's all they were. And so, yeah, it's, that, that, that is the mystery, but at the same time, if you knew who they were, if you, if you, if you knew who the actual people at the tippy top who were pulling the strings, you'd never be able to tell anybody because uh, they, they scour the world at all times, making sure that no one figures it out. And if, if someone gets kind of close, they'll deflect them or take care of them, whatever it is. But we all, we all know the groups, but no one can agree on them. And that's, that's how the game is played. But that, that's, your, that's your understanding of, of how the world works, that there, there are these hidden groups that are really, really old and that have been here for, for ages and hundreds of years, and, and they, they are the ones who, who pull all the strings globally yeah. everywhere. With, with, yeah. yeah, there's, I mean, if you know, it, it comes down to the human nature question, and there's different books on the subject which is if you once you figure out that the masses the general public are slaves to their addictions they are you know that, that human beings really have a hard time restraining themselves when it comes to anything then your ultimate goal at when you when you have power and that sort of money is to see if you can control it as much as possible to keep civilization from tearing itself apart and to do that, you, your goal is to control economies, to control the wars, you know, to make, you make the wars seem somewhat spontaneous, but at the same time, you know, that's only for the general public. Really, the, the wars are, are, are partly, partly theater. Um, there was a great line by one of our presidents, uh, FDR, Franklin Roosevelt, and it was, it was kind of cryptic, but I got it, which was, he goes, nothing in politics happens by accident. Meaning it's, it's even wars, you know, it takes a lot of, you've heard the term acts of Congress, you know, it takes a lot to get things going, but if you can control the population in a certain way, you know, that men in power, they only want th one thing, more power, which is kind of weird in, in a way, but they, they, they don't, they don't like risk. They don't like to, to watch a country, you know, implode from within. They'd rather control it if they could. You know, control everything. Really, it's that's that is the nature of power. Power corrupts. So, how do you see your your own role in all this? If if if, if say there is this super powerful, almost uh, omnipotent force hidden somewhere that that's keeping things secret. Yeah. And and you you you, you say that you see through it and you know the real truth. So how, how do you? I mean. How, how do I? I guess you don't see yourself as a conspiracy theorist. You see yourself as, I guess, some as some kind of an I don't know what you are, freedom fighter or truth teller. I mean, how how do you see your, your own role in this whole thing? I mean, it's um, well, that's a fascinating dynamic. Yeah, it, well, yeah, it is for me too because I, I, yeah, you're you're right. Normally, I've had lots of people ask. It's like, well, okay, why aren't you dead? <laughs> like, I don't know, uh, but at the same time. I believe that, I mean, yeah, do I, do I push the truth and do, you know, do I want people to kind of see through the veil? Yes. Uh, at the same time, I do believe in the greater good. So maybe that's why they're kind of leaving me alone in that capacity. Cause I believe, you know, their FDR also said, uh, only tell the people as much truth as they can handle. 
because there's a lot of people that just can't can't handle the truth. Uh, I know that's a movie quote, but it's true. Um, the the great line um, uh, from Jack Nicholson movie, but like perfect example would be uh, uh, Roswell, which was when Roswell came out here in the states. It, you know, it made the newspaper. We only had we didn't really have television. We only had newspaper and radio, but it hit the television. I'm sorry, it hit the newspapers really, really hard. And people were panicking. People were freaking out. And which is why, you know, they they back, you know, it took the Pentagon a few days to figure out what the happened, you know, what had happened at that base in New Mexico. So they they backpedaled really, really quickly. When what I think about flat earth, what, I'll, I'll be as blunt as I can here. I think that we're being allowed to talk about it. Meaning if you wanted to crush flat earth or stunt flat earth, into being just this tiny little thing that nobody cares about, which it was for a long, long time, you could have done it very, very easily, especially since Google owns YouTube. I mean, just those, just those two companies, for the rest of the search engines, we're talking about simple software, you know, simple coding, which is you just say, it, like recommended for you, you would never recommend a flat earth video for anyone ever. Ever, ever. And that's easy enough to do. And just, it would never, ever show up, which is what they did, by the way. They've been pulling back. But uh, on the Google side of things, you could say never, ever promote, or, you know, you could take down the metrics and say uh, the, any of these combinations of words don't give them much in the way of metrics at all. You know, stunt it. And they didn't. So why didn't they? Uh, I've, I've come to believe this after like the first year that we were being allowed to do this because flat earth is part of something bigger meaning flat earth tends to open minds up to other things and they want people to be open-minded to other things for maybe something bigger that's coming and that sounds a little weird but given what you're writing about maybe not so weird meaning um if that, that flat earth is the, the the frame for a canvas we haven't seen yet there's, there's a few things, by the way, that are bigger than flat earth. One would be the existence of, uh, you know, a civilization other than our own that predates us. And the other would be you know, the, the meaning of life, you know, why we are here. You know, those two things, it's both would be very, very tough to do to introduce to a public just, just cold where they weren't ready for it. And maybe flat earth is the warm up for something like that where it's it's a topic that again because once i i noticed that once people got into flat earth they were open to just about every other if you could, if you could open your mind to flat earth every other conspiracy is back on the table now i've seen so many people that have revisited the old conspiracies of the ones previous to this because they got into flat earth because why not it's like it's like i, I which is why also i can't condemn any other conspiracies anymore People beforehand, I would just run them out of the room. Now it's like, yeah, you know what? I, I absolutely will look at your conspiracy, no matter how crazy it is. I'll look at it for a few minutes. Sure, why not? What 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 grounds do I have to stand on to condemn it? So yeah, why am I still talking here? Why am I why am I alive? Um, I think it's being allowed to happen. I don't know why. At the same time, you know, I've never been approached by a black hat in any capacity. No one's come at me. You know, it's the gun or the briefcase option or, or the, the gun or the money, which is they give you two briefcases. It's like there's a gun in one, there's money in the other. You pick which one. And most people go for the money. I've never, never been tailed. No one's ever followed me. I've never had any weird, weird emails or phone calls or anything like that. They're just kind of letting me do my thing. And it's like, okay, so there's got to be a reason for it. I'm a believer in destiny. So, okay, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. So, so there was one, one thing I, I, I wanted to, I, just quickly, I've taken already a lot of your time, but I mean. That's fine. Uh, do, do you, I mean, you have a large audience now, and, and I mean, uh, do, do you see yourself as, as part of some kind of a larger truth movement. I mean, there's so many like uh, official lines, stroke conspiracies that people are talking about, and then there are these like, like, like some sort of censorship or things that pe people don't want other people to talk about. You mentioned 9/11 or vaccine, yeah, yeah, or coronavirus, yeah. or deep state. I mean, there, there's all these th theories around. And there are people talking about them and, and, and saying that we have this 
hidden truth we want out. And then, then, then I mean, I, I guess it's more or less what, what you are doing. Do you, do you feel some kind of a sympathy or um, kinship with these other groups as well? Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, let's face it. The uh, the conspiracy world took on a whole other dimension once the uh, the virus and the lockdown things happened, mostly because people were home. <laughs> There were so many more pe yeah. people that were yeah. home that were the the internet usage was just cranked up. So there were a lot of people going down rabbit holes that normally wouldn't have gone down rabbit holes. So I think the conspiracy world has now reached this maximum saturation. If you haven't if you haven't delved into conspiracies in all of 2020, well, then you're probably not going to at at this stage. Uh, aside from the American, the whole QAnon nonsense. Uh, but even that, you know, people that were going into QAnon were looking, I mean, granted, it was mostly Trump based, but they were looking at conspiracies. Uh, yeah, there is this weird truth thing that's happening out there and it's being hit from all sides. I mean, why would the mainstream media, for example, if you, again, if you're the mainstream media, if you want to diminish it, you just don't even bring it up. You don't bring up QAnon. You don't bring up fake news. You don't bring up conspiracies in any of your headlines. You make sure the Associated Press doesn't run that. And but they are. It's it's like they're giving people a chance to look at it. Maybe maybe this is you know the final the the big the big showdown where everybody has to you know choose. It's like all right, are you into conspiracies or are you not? Because at this point, everybody's been exposed to them. I mean, the, heck, there's net so many Netflix documentaries. The fact that there was even a Netflix documentary allowed on Flat Earth. Even allowed. If you, Again, if you wanted to stunt it, that thing doesn't get made. And and the, the producers, the, the directors, they had no faith at all that it was going to get picked up. None. None at all. I mean, there was like, they weren't even, they weren't even convinced he could make it into film festivals. And it was, it was just every film festival they applied to. It's like, oh yeah, we'll totally run it. And then it's like, well, it's not going to get bought. And it's like, oh, it was picked up by Amazon and, and iTunes and Netflix. It's picked up by everybody. And, but if you want to stunt it, you could have stunted it. You could have removed it. You could have wiped it out and you didn't. So yeah, I think it's part of a, a greater truth thing. And there's all sort of, the, the truth movement is, is bigger than it's ever been. It's still very, very disorganized, uh, but at the, and the, the difference here is, I don't want to drag this out too much, which is with this massive new push in conspiracies, this awareness of conspiracies, there's also this massive push to clamp down on some of them. You know, the, if you want to call it censorship, you can, but there is, you know, where there are some conspiracies you are not allowed to talk about on the mainstream, definitely not on mainstream and definitely not social media. Uh, you know, like, for example, you can't you can talk about 9-11 kind of on YouTube, even though technically it's a false flag, but you can't use the word false flag. But on mainstream networks, you can't talk about 9-11. You can't. So it's, it's weird. It, it's, it's, it's only happening in social media. It's outside of social media. It's like it doesn't exist. And it's so, yes, this weird p paradox it just drives me nuts. So what are your, your plans? I mean, what's your plans for the future? What's going to happen next? I mean, you, 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 as you mentioned, you have your YouTube and your followers and you've done the next, <laughs> next, next special. And I mean, I don't, I don't what, know. Yeah. As far as me, what's next? Well, I'll give you some perspective. Um, in 2019, we couldn't have been any bigger. I mean, I was, I'd done conferences in what, seven different countries and, you know, did a commercial down in Australia and did all this fun stuff. And then I was coming back from a, a television interview in London. And that's when all of a sudden I started hearing, you know, by the time I got back, even before the next, I was supposed to go back out to London before that happened was when the lockdowns happened you know, in the beginning of 2020. And so then everything mm -hmm. just went to pause. I mean, we couldn't even do conferences here in the States because we couldn't find a venue. Remember, this is conspiracy people. Conspiracy people won't wear masks, won't get tested and won't take the shot. So what do you do? <laughs> I mean, you can't, you can't do conferences because you like, you know, our big one was supposed to be in, in Las Vegas and we couldn't do it because we couldn't find a venue that would let us walk in without masks. So we're kind of, it's, we, we're in this weird place now. I, I, I you know, I'll be again, as be as blunt as I can here. 
it's going to be this ne- the next nine to 12 months is going to be the most difficult time for the conspiracy people ever. Because because of the the whole rollout, you know, the, the whole vaccine world thing, which is coming out. And, and people aren't taught, the stories aren't being written on this yet, but they will be, which is, there's a whole bunch of people that don't want to take the shot. And what are you, you going to do with them? Because now I, I made a video, I got my first community guidelines strike ever in six years on YouTube because I wrote, I did a, a video that said, and I'll send it to you if you want, that said, um, we're, we're entering a new a two class system, which is straight out of the movie Gattaca from 1997, which is if you take the vaccine, you're a first class citizen. If you don't, you're not. You're something else. And that is what the conspiracy world is going to run into. So I, I don't know what's going to happen to them. It's, it's going to be this weird galvanizing process that you know we're in uncharted territory. Right now, so I really don't know. Every day I wake up and it's like, I check the news headlines. It's like, okay, what's coming? Because even I don't know.